profession of faith and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that began my uh, eternal life, if you will, in Jesus Christ. I remember that, and it's, I think it's noteworthy now, especially in the time that we live today. Um, it was customary for the churches to have two-week revivals. And uh, the revival was both in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, and in the evening. And this was a morning service, although it was a school day, we were present as the school because it was just a custom at that time for the entire school, which was about a quarter of a mile away, uh, to all march together down to the church, local church, and attend the, the weekday services as the entire school. Uh, you can imagine that happening today. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't happen anywhere, I'm no. sure, today. But Unless you're in a parochial system. Well, that's true, of course. But uh, we were there at uh, that revival service, and on that particular day, I went forward and, and gave my life to Jesus Christ, of course. And, of course, I would point out that that's the most important decision that I've ever made, and it is the most important decision that anyone can ever make. Uh, choosing Jesus Christ and settling the question of where you're going to spend eternity. And then you and Jan went on to Eastern University, I understand. Well, we first went to a, a two-year college that was close by, Lindsay Wilson College in Columbia, Kentucky. And uh, we graduated from there, went on then to Eastern Kentucky University, graduated from there. And uh, we moved then to Northern Kentucky, to Fort Mitchell, Kentucky where I started teaching at Beechwood High School in the, in the sciences. And uh, we stayed there. We, I was at Beechwood for 10 years, and we continued to live there for another 10 years or so in that area. And uh, Jan began teaching in the Kenton County school system, and then finally uh, she moved to Northern Kentucky University when it was formed in 1968. I think she moved there in 72, if I remember correctly, as a assistant professor in uh, communications where she finished out her career uh, in education. So both of us were in education for um, a career, for our lifetime career. Uh, plus, of course, then we were in, uh, uh, in later years, I was called to the ministry and pastored two different churches for a total of about 20 years. Uh, in uh, here in northern Kentucky uh, and across the state. And I always like to throw this in about Jan. Now she's not on here to defend herself, but you know she happened to teach a little bit at my alma mater at Simon Kenton High School. For three years, yes. For three years. Yes. So I'm always proud and happy to say <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> because uh, I'm very proud of my class of 1961 from Simon Kenton and all the Simon Kenton graduates. Uh, having um, been in education most of my life, in and out, in politics and government. But uh, Simon Kenton uh, is very important to me and always has been. And Jan taught there for three years and was highly respected there by Mr. J.B. Losey, who was there for many, many years and who's still alive and comes to our class reunions, 1961 class. But uh, then after you all were over, she was at Northern, and highly regarded over there as a professor and teacher and instructor in business and, and uh, all sorts of things that she was involved in over there. And when you all stepped out of the picture, of course now you've got to tell people you also was with KEA for how many years? Well, a total of 30 years. A total of 30 years, and you were their chief lobbyist, uh, or one of their chief lobbyists, and, and you were um, uh, representative of the teachers with the with, uh, both NEA and KEA and the, all the local associations, what's known as Uniserve Director, and then also down in Frankfurt with the legislature, right? Uh, yes, and then uh, I was with the State Department of Education as Associate Superintendent of Public Instruction for... With Alice McDonald. For a time, then. something, of course, you know something about, too. Well, I, <laughs> the Lord blessed me with being the first person elected from Northern Kentucky to any constitutional office in over 
70 years uh, to any of the offices, and that was uh, superintendent of education for the mm -hmm. state of Kentucky, the last elected one. Since then, thank goodness, Miss June's help. She kept me going and kept keeps me busy and all these things. <laughs> but since then, we've had uh, Trey Grayson was elected statewide, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to Secretary of State, did a magnificent job. And now we have uh, representation in Frankfurt that's really been helpful. But now we want to come to the part where I think is really um, the crux of why we're here today. Number one, when you all stepped out of education, public education, you stepped into, not out of, because you've already in it, you stepped into godly education, godly principles. You bought three radio stations and turned them into Christian radio stations. Tell us that story, if you don't mind. Well, that happened in 1991, uh, at least the first one of the three stations. And uh, it would be a, a rather lengthy story, but a very amazing story of how we came to acquire these stations. They were put into our hands by God. I'm convinced of that. And God called us to manage those radio stations. And by the way, he spoke of us as owner of the radio stations. Uh, as I read God's word, it says that he's the owner of everything. Everything, right. Uh, Psalm 24, for example, says that the earth is the Lord's and everything that is therein belongs to him. That's a concept I think we need to each one finally come to grips with that we own nothing Amen. it's put into our hands for a time to manage for God mm -hmm. and hopefully we manage it well but we're not the owners of the radio stations God is the owner in fact the scripture says we don't even own our own bodies we're not even ourselves uh, we don't own ourselves that we are bought with a price and that price was paid by Jesus Christ with his own life and blood when he died on the cross, of course. And today is, happens to be Good, Good Friday, Friday, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's a day that we commemorate as the time when Jesus went to the cross and laid down his life. He spilled his blood and laid down his life as the supreme, perfect sacrifice supplied by God himself to pay for the sins of all mankind. He paid for the sins of all mankind for all time. I like to remember it this way. He paid for all sin, for all mankind, for all time, mm -hmm. past, mm -hmm. present, and future. And the fact that he did that, of course, makes it possible for our sins to be forgiven and for us to become children of God and part of the family of God mm -hmm. and heirs of all that God has were joint heirs with Jesus Christ and of course Jesus made that possible so today we are observing Good Friday uh, and remembering him being on that cross for a total of about six hours uh, from nine until three and at three o'clock in the afternoon uh, Jesus said, it is finished, it is finished. And what he meant by that is that he had paid the price. Mm -hmm. uh, his spilled blood upon that cross and upon the, as a result of the whippings that he had received before going to the cross, his spilling of his own precious blood and the giving of his life there on the cross enabled him to say at that three o'clock hour, it is finished. And what he meant is it's done, it's completed. The price is paid. I have done what I came to the earth to do. He said many times, my purpose in coming was and is to go to the cross, to go to Jerusalem, to be crucified, to be hung on the tree, he said. And it was necessary that that all happen to fulfill God's plan from the foundation of the world to redeem mankind. When mankind sinned, 
that was certainly no surprise to God. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's amazing to me that God in his complete knowledge, knowing that when he created man, man would rebel against him and sin against him and fall and be needing then a savior to be redeemed and to put back in the right relationship with God himself. God knew all of that from the foundation of the world and yet he created man. So the ultimate purpose of God in creating mankind certainly is good. Even though mankind rebelled and mankind uh, fell from God's grace and became literally spiritually dead, it was God himself who developed the plan from the foundation of the world for Jesus to come and to be that perfect sacrifice. Uh, to pay for the sin of of all mankind for all time. Now, I wonder how to um, how does the Jewish nation play into this? What what uh, part do they have in in reference to the Passover and mm-hmm. and that? And the sacrifice too. I think one of the things that a lot of people that may not be Christians or or looking at it, they don't understand why Christ died on the cross. You know that he became the ultimate sacrifice but how is that in relation to all these sacrifices through the Old Testament there were so many sacrifices if you just read through every almost every book of the Bible in the Old Testament you'll see sacrifices up to the time of Christ and even after Christ but what why were there why were there sacrifices like that and how is that related to the ultimate sacrifice of Christ Well, we see a sacrifice being made immediately after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. The result of their sin, one of the results, was that they realized they were naked. Naked. Mm -hmm. So God killed an animal, the word tells us. Right. And he clothed them with the skins of that animal. So that animal had to be sacrificed. Right. In order for their sin to be covered. Covered, okay. Now that began the principle behind the sacrifices in Judaism. And of course, you spoke of of the nation of Israel. Uh, Of course, the nation of Israel, God chose Abraham to be the father of the nation of Israel. And he chose the land for Abram to occupy, Abram who became Abraham, Abraham. for, for that to be the belong to the children of Israel, uh, the nation of Israel, God's chosen people, God's chosen nation. And out of Israel, out of that nation, and specifically the tribe of Judah, Jesus was born to the Virgin Mary. And of course the father of Jesus was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 